I know I was meant to speak about um, like any experiences I had in lockdown or um, any experiences with God or testimonies I had throughout lockdown. Um, but it was, I think it was a bit different for me because I was using that time to to play football. I wasn't really searching for God at that point. Like I was using my whole time to play football and train and it was useful because like in general, I've gotten better at football and that was just the main thing for me. Um, little stuff happened where um, like my dad had a heart attack and like where Corona was such a big thing at that time, um, ambulance took forever to come. So if if they were any longer, like even the slightest bit longer, I think about half an hour longer, he could have he could have died from it, um, and I think I think it was after that um, my grandma died. Um, so I was about to say little things, but big things like that happened during the lockdown, where it's like it kind of it kind of shook me a bit. You, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like m more recently, so um, when I was in college for about almost a year. That's when I feel like my journey with God was more, you know, apparent because I was spending so much time um, on trains and so much time in, in class not speaking to anyone because I didn't really get along with anyone. They was all kind of leading this life where, you know, it's all about girls or it's all about just the stuff that they were talking about wasn't really me. Um, so I was spending loads of time just on my own and not really talking to anyone. And not like feeling for, sorry for myself, it's just I wasn't, I wasn't really, um, I don't really want to include myself in their conversations. So yeah, a lot of time was spent just being kind of lonely um, and in my own thoughts. And that was even outside of school as well then, because I was trying so hard to train and so hard to improve myself um, in football. It's like, yeah, everything was in my own head. Um, but with it, at the same time, there was a lot of times where I felt kind of empty and then I would ask for discipleship from different people and be like, yeah, this is... Or even just speaking to my mum or my dad about just my, my relationship with God and this emptiness, I felt like the only thing that could fill it in was um, Jesus. And, and just reading the Bible every morning instead of going on my phone every morning was something that, you know... It improved my relationship with God and I felt like, yeah, my relationship with God was becoming more important and, um, yeah, completely way more important than anything else. So stuff like when I started, when I left my college because of praying, like I prayed about it for a while and I just wasn't feeling, I was feeling quite depressed from it. So I prayed about should I leave and, and where should I go after that? And, and I did leave because I felt like it was God telling me to. So I left um, because of just talking to God more um, and feeling that the strong advice from God to tell me to leave. Um, and then after that, again, I thought I was, um, I was like, um, I went astray from God again for a little while just because I was, I was just leading a life that wasn't, you know, for God. And, and it was completely apparent to me now and like I can tell now um, because in that time I was just stressed as well. Um, I was stressed about what am I, what am I going to do, um, in terms of like, am I going to go to college? Like, do I want to go to uni after this? Now that I've left college midway, what do I do? Um, and once I kind of got back into this place of, yeah, God's, I need to put God there not like any lower, you know, he, he had to be higher than everything for any like any decision to just to be you know wise um and once i put him at the top of everything i think everything just started to come more clear and just i started to be way more st less less stressed about everything um because i kind of thought okay i'm gonna leave college this is gonna make me um like happy now i'm gonna be comfortable and i wasn't but as soon as i went back to god everything was everything was all right um, and just more recently now, just with football and everything else, like not being at college, but still having a strong relationship with God is what is what's 
kept me, you know, sane. It's kept me calm because I just had this hope that, you know, he's he's got everything in a in a plan for me and it's not it's not up to me, it's not my plan, is it? Um and just from praying and just and trusting that God's got something there for me. Um I don't have to worry, if you know what I'm saying. Morning Eastern Church. It's like being back in lockdown with the videos, isn't it? And I've been asked to share something about what God was speaking to me about uh, during lockdown as we continue to return to a bit more like normal times, whatever normal is. And the thing that kept encouraging me uh, and taking my eyes off of me and the weird, scary time we all found ourselves in was God reminding me he is on the throne. God on the throne can be one of those Christian ideas that leads to a lot of questions. Is God actually sitting in the sky on a big royal chair or not? If it helps you imagine God uh, with a fluffy white beard and luxurious white hair, clothed in royal robes, sitting on a big chair, then go for it. I'm not entirely sure it's accurate, but one day we'll find out. I think it's more a case of God using terms to describe himself so our tiny human brains can understand it. God's throne represents his power, his perfect justice, glory, majesty, holiness, power, authority and control. It was these ideas that when I found thoughts wandering to unhelpful places, the knowledge that whatever weirdness is going on on earth, God remains in control of his creation, seated on high. God is in control. I just kept reminding myself of that. I'm the only Christian in my family most of my friends are non-believers. I've often thought I have no idea how they get through each day without Jesus. I think back to the time before I came to faith and I have no idea how I got through each day without Jesus. To get through each day when a global pandemic was messing up all we've known for so long was a challenge. I'm sure I'm not alone when you'd hear people uh, struggling in lockdown because things they'd put their faith in, jobs, social activities, people. These things suddenly weren't an option and they were seen to be the frail, temporary things that they are. It's not to say I didn't have days where I did struggle, but I could always turn my eyes upward and focus my heart on something unchanging, permanent and eternal. There are two good things about this. One, like a dog isn't just for Christmas, God isn't just for lockdowns. God remains on the throne now in 2022 when things are mostly back to pre-lockdown times. God was on the throne in 1989, a great year to be born. God was on the throne in 500 BC. God was on the throne at the beginning. God will be on the throne in 2222, long after all of us have returned to dust. God will be on the throne forever. There's comfort in that. Whatever is going on in our lives, when things aren't going as perhaps we'd like them to, or even when things are going great for us, God remains in control. There's freedom in that. When our circumstances and emotions are all over the place like a roller coaster, God remains like that, unchanging. And the second good thing, you might be saying, this sounds wonderful, but I wish God was closer and not so far away on his throne. Well, he is close. The same God who has total power and authority lives in us through the Holy Spirit. God is with you, steering you, filling you with his fatherly presence because he loves you. God is with you now as you watch this video. Some practical advice to wrap up with. Some verses that I just kept reading daily to focus my heart and mind on God. We've recently looked at them in our series on Philippians. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. I won't go into them, so please read them in your own time and let God speak his truth over you. But the end of verse 8 says, If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's God, isn't it? All excellent and praiseworthy things are from him. If you need some thoughts of what to think about God, read Psalm 103. I won't read it all, but it starts with praising God for all he does and all he is. He forgives all our sins. He heals. He redeems. He pours out his love and compassion over us. He satisfies us with good things. He is a righteous and just God who works for the oppressed. He's made himself known working throughout history. He is a gracious God, slow to anger with abounding love. 
He doesn't treat us as we deserve because of how much he loves us. His love is as big as the gap from where your feet are touching the ground now to the highest point of heaven. As far as east is from west, he has removed your sin. He remembers his promises and will love you forever. And verse 19 says, The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. I know it can be a bit weird over summer with no church on and worshipping and spending time with God can look different for all of us. And some ideas that may help to focus on him, these aren't groundbreaking ideas, but we don't need to overcomplicate things. If reading is your thing, find a good book. Read the Bible, just a chapter a day, you can do it. If you prefer audio, find a good podcast or listen to worship music. Have a good old worship sing-along in the shower. Find an app that will help you spend time with God. I was recommended the Lectio 365 app a little while ago. It provides a morning and evening prayer. They're not too long. It gives you time to pause, slow the day down and just spend time with God. And whilst for some of us a break from people can be nice, I also know the importance of community. We need people. So go to the picnics if you can. Make dinner plans with people or arrange time to hang out with one another. We are the church. Just because we're not at our building doesn't mean the church has stopped. Enjoy your summer. Focus on God who rules in heaven and let him be the God of peace in your heart at the same time.